Okay. And then uh, when I've done, I'll just turn it over to you all. Okay. And that'll be time when you can deal with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Madam Mayor, pro tem, if you'd like my seat, that's okay. fine. Yeah, fine. I'll just, I'll just sit okay. So when, when he calls now, it, it, I got these extra copies. Do I just give that to you? Or just uh, you can give it to the clerk right here. She's the clerk. She's the main grader. All straight. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting uh, to order at 7 o'clock p.m. on January the 4th. And certainly want to wish all of you a happy new year and pleased to have you here this evening. We probably have a pretty short agenda, but uh, what I'd like to do is to take a moment of solemn meditation, please. Thank you. I'll ask Councilman Davis to lead us in the pledge. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Johnson. Here. Council Member Moffitt. Here. Council Member Reese. Here. And Council Member Shule. Thank you. We, we have two proclamations this evening, and I'm going to ask first if Councilman Ed, Ed Davis would introduce first. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, I'd like to ask if we could have the um, representatives from the um, Benjamin and Edith Spaulding Descendants Foundation and any representative from the George White Bar Association and any representative from the Durham City Workers Association, if you would come and stand with me. This is a proclamation uh, uh, recognizing George H. White Remembrance Day. Um, whereas Durham and Duke University will be the site of the 115th anniversary banquet of, the George, Henry White, of George Henry White's famous farewell to Congress speech on January 29, 2016 
at the Searle Conference Center on the Duke campus with Congressman G.K. Butterfield as the keynote speaker. And whereas this banquet will be sponsored by the Phoenix, Phoenix Historical Society, the Benjamin and Edith Spaulding Descendants Foundation, the George Henry White Bar Association, and the North Carolina Grand Lodge of Prince Hall Masons, which is headquartered in Durham, and other partners. And whereas the North Carolina NAACP has its state headquarters in Durham, and the George White and George Henry White was a founding member of the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania branch of the NAACP. And whereas George Henry White served in the North Carolina House of Representatives as a member of the North Carolina State Senate, but most famously represented the second congressional district of North Carolina in the United States Congress. And whereas George Henry White was born in 1852 in Bladen County, North Carolina, before the emancipation of the enslaved community, and whereas he attended the Rehoboth Freedman School before matriculating at Howard University in Washington, D.C., and whereas George Henry White worked as a teacher and principal in New Bern before studying for and passing the North Carolina Bar, Associ the bar um, exam and becoming a lawyer in 1879, and whereas George Henry White later became a state legislator, a state solicitor, the Grand Ma Master of the North Carolina Prince Hall Masons, he ultimately was elected to and was sworn into the 55th United States Congress in 1897. As a representative, as a U.S. representative, he appealed to his congressional colleagues for federal assistance for the African American victims of the 1898 Wilmington Massacre and sponsored anti-lynching legislation. And whereas, due to the institution of racially restrictive state laws, state constitutional amendments, and the United States Supreme Court rulings, including Plessy versus Ferguson, George Henry White became the single remaining African American member of Congress at the end of the 55th session of the United States Congress in 1901. And whereas during his final floor speech um, at the final speech on the floor of the United States House of Representatives on January 29, 1901, George Henry White gave his famous farewell address in which he declared that though he was departing, the African American would rise up like the mythical phoenix bird and serve again in the United States Congress. And whereas the city of Durham, North Carolina, commemorates and remembers the life, legacy, and the 115th anniversary of the 1901 Phoenix speech of George Henry White, now therefore, William V. Bill Bell, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, does hereby proclaim Friday, January 29th, 2016, to be George Henry White Day in Durham and he encourages all citizens to recognize and remember the accomplishments of this great and historic man. Witness Mayor Bell's hand and the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina on this day, on this fourth day of January 2016, and it's signed by William V. Bill Bell. And here is the proclamation as read, and I will turn the podium over to Mr. Spaulding. Thank you, uh, Council Member Davis, for sponsoring this uh, uh, proclamation on behalf of the organizations that I represent. I have a short testimony I would like to read that is presently being passed out to the mayor and other members of the council at this time. Uh, uh, mayor Bell. And the members of the city council, my name is Vincent Spaulding, and I'm the past president and the current chief operating officer of the Benjamin Edith Spaulding Descendants Foundation, which was established for educational, literary, and charitable purposes, among other functions. Tonight, I'm here to speak in support of honoring George Henry White by establishing a George Henry White Day in Durham in order to recognize the 115th anniversary of his farewell speech to the U.S. Congress January 29th, 2001. My organization is among six other organizations located mostly in the United States in North Carolina 
who have come together to take action to promote the life and accomplishments of the United States Congress and George Henry White. The orga other organizations, in, in addition to the organization I represent, are the Phoenix Historical Society of Tallboro, North Carolina, the George Henry White Bar Association of Durham, North Carolina, the North Carolina Grand Lodge of Prince Hall Masons, Concerned Citizens of Whitesboro, New Jersey, the Ebenezer Presbyterian Church of Newburn, North Carolina, and living descendants of George Henry White in North Carolina and Durham. In addition to the, these representatives, uh, these organizations have come together to use the combined prestige of their organization to uplift the name and legacy of George Henry White. In George Henry White's farewell speech to the Congress in 1901, he was a sole voice in Congress for some 10 million Afro-Americans. Afro in the opinion of many congressmen, Congressman White's farewell to Congress speech is as significant as the American, in American history as Reverend Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech over 62 years ago. White's farewell to Congress speech includes the best summary of the progress of African Americans achieved in 35 years at that time since slavery and detailed the fraud and violence of white supremacy who disenfranchised Afro-Americans across the South by 1900. His final prophetic word that Phoenix like he, the Negro, would rise up someday and come again were fulfilled by Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. Congressman White was the highest ranking Afro-American elected official in the United States when he served in Congress and his courageous advocacy for the equal rights of all citizens has not yet received recognition in the mainstream of American history. Attached to my testimony is a flyer that provides an overview of the banquet we are sponsoring at the Duke University Cyril Conference Center on January 29, 2016 to celebrate and mark the 115th anniversary of George Turner White's farewell address to the U.S. Congress. I sincerely hope that the members of the Durham City Council will vote to pass a resolution establishing the George Turner White Day in Durham on January 29, 2016 in connection with the 115th anniversary of George Henry White's farewell address to the U.S. Congress, January 29, 1901. Thank you for this opportunity to testify in support of this resolution. Well, thank you, Vincent. And uh, Eddie, I, I, as I noticed, you spoke about Congressman Butterfield being the keynote speaker. One of his staff persons is here tonight also. It's a Senate Taylor from his office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Good evening. Good evening. I will be reading a National Mentoring, Mentoring Month uh, proclamation. And DeWarren, would you come stand with me and anybody else who's here supporting uh, the reading of this proclamation? Whereas in 2002, the Harvard School of Public Health and Mentor, M-E-N-T-O-R, the National Mentoring Partnership created National Mentoring Month. And whereas the goals of National Mentoring Month are to raise awareness of youth mentoring, recruit individuals to mentor, encourage organizations to engage and integrate quality in youth mentoring programs, and seek to highlight effective mediation in preventing juvenile delinquency. And whereas a mentor 
is a caring and supportive individual who devotes time to nurture youth by promoting the discovery of personal strength and potential in a structured and trusting relationship, and whereas quality youth mentoring encourages positive choices, promotes self-esteem, supports academic achievement, and introduces young people to new ideas, and whereas mentoring programs have shown to be effective in combating school violence, discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy, and whereas development experts agree that youth mentoring is critical to the social, emotional, and cognitive development of our young people and helps them navigate the path to adulthood more successfully and whereas research shows that young people who were at risk for not completing high school but who had mentors were 55 percent more likely to successfully enroll in college, 81 percent more likely to participate regularly in extracurricular activities, more than twice as likely to hold leadership positions in a club or sports team, and 78 percent more likely to volunteer regularly in their communities. And whereas mentors help young people by promoting networking, connecting with industry professionals, setting career goals, and ultimately assist in finding gainful employment. Now therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 2016 as National Mentoring Month in Durham, and hereby call upon public officials, business and community leaders, and educators, and encourage all citizens to observe this month with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs in order to, number one, recognize the men and women who serve as staff and volunteers at quality youth mentoring programs, and who encourage our youth to find inner strength and reach their full potential. Secondly, acknowledge that mentoring is beneficial because it encourages educational achievement, reduces juvenile delinquency, improves life outcomes, and ultimately strengthens communities. Third, promote the creation and expansion of quality youth mentoring programs across Durham to equip young people with the tools needed to lead healthy and productive lives. And lastly, support initiatives to close the mentoring gap. Witness my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina this fourth day of January 2016, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor. Would you like to yes. a few words? On behalf of the Durham County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, we would like to thank Mayor Bell for this proclamation. Uh, the future of our young people really does depend on our community providing them with the support and the resources they need to identify and achieve their goals. And one of the things, one of the reasons we're highlighting mentoring is because mentoring is an effective strategy that keeps our young people from the juvenile justice system and ultimately out of the career to prison pipeline. So thank you all so very much. We'll be having additional events throughout this month, one of which will be working with the Book Harvest to uh, solicit donations of gently used children's books, as well as having a breakfast and recognition of mentors in this community in February. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Well, we, we certainly appreciate both uh, proclamations this evening, and certainly uh, focusing on young people is, is very important in this community. And Vince, I, I want to appreciate you again for uh, allowing us to honor J.J. White at the banquet, but you honor us by bringing it here to Durham. We think it's a very appropriate place for an event such as that to happen. I'm glad that Duke University is supporting you also. I, I'm not going to 
some of you here for the first time, we're getting ready to get into the agenda, so don't feel you've got to sit through a meeting if you have something else to do. I'd like to recognize uh, members of the council for comments, recognize Councilman Moffitt. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, the, many of us have known over the years Dr. Sharon Elliott Bynum, uh, who has worked very hard here in Durham uh, to provide um, health care and other services to everyone, regardless of their uh, position in life. And um, I'm very sad to announce, I mean, I'm not announcing, I'm very sad to relay that Dr. Um, Elliott Bynum lost her fight with a um, relatively long illness at far too young an age, and um, so we lost her yesterday. Why don't we take a silent, moment of silent meditation for her, if you don't mind. Thank you. Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. I was going to recognize um, the loss of my sister, Sharon Elliott Bynum, but thank you. Don for that because we serve on a committee together and we work so tirelessly to get her some money uh, to help with her programs. I would like to recognize another sister, Lois Carraway. Uh, you might recall Mr. Nathaniel White who had a tailor business. I'm sorry, no, no, no. Mr. Nathaniel Walker. He had the tell like this. Okay. Still had the play on my mind. After he died, Lois Carraway took over the business. And I just wanted to uh, have a moment of silence in commemoration of her life. She passed on um, Christmas Eve after a fight uh, with cancer. She was a gentle spirit who loved God, community, and family. And I met her. Uh, because she was doing some work for the police department when I was an employee. Thank you. I recognize our newest Abe Lincoln Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when I was elected to this office two months ago, I knew that we had some of the best city employees uh, in the world. Uh, but since my election in November, uh, my respect and appreciation for the employees of the city of Durham has only grown. Uh, whether it was from the time between my election and my swearing in a month ago, uh, when city staff here in this building and all over the city bent over backwards to help train me on exactly what the city does and how it does it, um, or if it's been in the last month as I've tried to figure out how to do my job, um, and they've uh, ably assisted me in doing that. Um, I have come to to respect and appreciate so much the work that they do. I know all of us received an email uh, last week about our city inspectors and how hard they work um, and how heavy a workload they have and how, how much uh, they go above and beyond the call of duty to help folks in Durham. And I just wanted to mention that, but the, the main reason I wanted to say something tonight is that over the last week and a half, we experienced some, some really heavy rains and really difficult flooding. And as I drove around the city of Durham during those storms, I saw uh, the employees of our Department of Public Works everywhere in this city, um, blocking traffic in order to keep people off of flooded roadways, uh, going into very deep, uh, undrained uh, areas to try and unclog drains to help keep areas safe, keep roadways open. And uh, so I just wanted to extend my appreciation to all the city staff, but especially in light of the difficult hazardous work that they did last week uh, to the members of the staff of the Department of Public Works uh, for, uh, for some really extraordinary efforts uh, to keep our city up and running and keep us all safe. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Johnny. Any other comments? I think I'm supposed to be sworn in. I'm it's sorry, Mayor what? Pro Tem. Who's going to swear? Oh, she didn't know if you want to do it tonight. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you explain ready. the process? Of what's, what's yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden is going to be sworn in tonight as the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, at the advice of the Institute of Government, they are suggesting that that be done. This is a new 
process that for those of you who may or may not know uh, that as the clerk indicated Institute of Governance uh, suggested and maybe the city attorney might add to that the swearing in of the mayor pro tem of city council persons yeah and because it is new let me let me just add that the question really is that the, the mayor pro tem is there to serve in particular if the the mayor becomes incapacitated and the question then becomes uh, could he or she actually uh, act in an official capacity without being sworn in? Um, and that was the question that was in front of the Institute of Government, and they suggested, um, you know, in that emergency situation to go ahead and do it now when it's not an emergency, so if something does come up, uh, we don't have to worry about whether she is uh, actually sworn in to serve as the, the mayor. Cora Cole McFadden. I, Cora Cole McFadden. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As mayor pro tem of the city of Durham. As mayor pro tem of the great city of Durham. Yes, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Are there any other announcements by members of the council? If not, we'll proceed with the agenda as printed. The first item will be the priority, priority items by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. No priority items. Likewise, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on tonight's uh, general business agenda, item number 15, Carver Street Extension Contract ST257 Award. As you recall at our um, work session um, last last year, uh, there were some questions that were uh, that were raised about um, this particular contractor that we had in place. Uh, but because of the, the timing of the questions, uh, we really didn't have the opportunity with the holiday um, to, to meet with the contractor until uh, this afternoon. We met with the contractor at 2 o'clock. Um, and by we, it's myself along with the um, Fred Lamar of my office and staff from the Public Works and the Finance Department. But we did sit down with Triangle Grading and Paving to get some responses to the questions that you asked. Um, and then we had a separate meeting after that of just city <coughs> staff members. Uh, we, what we'd like to do and what I'm proposing to do is to refer item 15 back to the attorney's office to give us the opportunity to uh, to synthesize our, our notes and provide that information to you along with our legal analysis based on the facts that we, uh, that we, we gleaned from the meeting uh, today. That gives you some time to review the information. If you've got other questions or concerns, um, I'd be happy to call a closed session on Thursday to discuss the items uh, more in detail uh, with you. I did want to recognize, however, that, that members of Triangle Paving and Grading are here today. Um, and I appreciate them meeting with us uh, this afternoon, and uh, we'll continue our conversations if you're so inclined to refer this back to the, to the attorney's office. Thank you. You've heard the prior item about a city attorney recommendation. Entertain a motion on So moved. Second. Improper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. I would recognize the city clerk for any priority items. Um, my item has already been taken care of, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. Uh, would it be appropriate to move uh, referring item 15 back to the city attorney's office at this time? Now I'll make that motion. It's been proper. It's a second. It's been proper. Move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Okay, we'll move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda may be approved with a single vote if an item is removed by a city council person or someone in the public. We discuss that later in the program, and I'll just read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Item one is Durham Homeless Services Advisory Committee appointments. Item four is the passing vehicle for hire commission reappointment. Item five is street and infrastructure acceptances. Item six is fiscal year 2016-2017 budget development schedule. Item seven is grant project ordinance amendment historic preservation fund grant. Item eight is Urban Ministries of Durham, Inc. 2015-2016 Community Development Block Grant Contract for Community Cafe Meals for Emergency Shelter Residents. Item nine is November 2015 Bid Report. Item 10 is Contract Between Musco 
Sports Lightning LLC in the city of Durham for sports lighting at CM Hernan Road Park baseball fields. Item 11 is land lease between the city of Durham and Durham Regional Association of Realtors, Inc. Item 12 is request for lien and civil penalty waiver or cancellation for the properties at 2401 and 2403 Orange Street. Item 13 is janitorial services contract for the Durham Armory. Item 14 is sue only utility extension agreement with Arnufo uh, Ayaya and Yania Guado Pena. Wow, I hope we got that right. To serve 2639 East Gear Street. Item 15, this item can be found on the general business agenda. Item 17 is commercial meter replacement project phase three, MR9, award of construction to Vanguard Utility Services, Inc. Uh, that Item 16 is contract for purchases of insulation and maintenance of water management laboratory information management systems, LIMS. Uh, entertain a motion on approval of consent agenda. So moved, sir. Second. Second. Proper move and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. Open the vote. Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Move to the general business agenda. Item 15, Carver Street Extension Contract, ST257 Award. Meetings adjourn at 7.28 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.